so don't attach yourself completely to the idea uh, talk to more like minded people uh, who want to do something who are very passionate about creating something in india uh, india has over the years evolved into a stage where farmers come uh, bring their produce to a market mm. an auction happens there price gets decided there based on the quality variety uh, and everything and then uh, after that kirana walks into the market so so market has become like a, a central point for farmers can come and give their produce and kirana can come and uh, buy or consumer like you and me also can walk into the market and buy right we used to have a product flow where we wanted to get the bank account details uh, let's say collected by our uh, sales person uh-huh. <clears throat> where we would ask for their passbook or let's say we would ask for their account number and key it in our app and we would send one rupee which we call the penny drop feature to understand if the account really belongs to the farmer or someone else right Welcome to yet another episode on our product podcast today we have with us Harish Swaminathan who is a VP product at Ninja Car and a very very exciting discussion for everyone who's interested in tech and products over the next 60 minutes we're going to be covering a lot about his journey he's had two very interesting transitions that all of you all will be excited to learn more about we're going to be chatting about the Ninja Car journey he's been here from the early days um so if any of you all are agri tech enthusiasts or building in the space or are interested about this user segment this is going to be very very interesting post which we're going to go a little deeper into harish's personal journey learn about what he's excited in 2024 and as usual we have a very exciting rapid fire lined up for all of you with that getting started harish thank you so much for joining us today this is going to be an exciting 60 minutes uh first of all thank you so much for having me uh i am really looking forward to this conversation hopefully we have a great session here yeah absolutely harish starting from those early days um what i noticed is you've had two very interesting transitions and especially for our members there are lots of engineers who want to transition to product and uh, also transitioning into a very early stage product company back in the day when startups weren't um, as exciting as they are today or at least from a market standpoint but it has become normalized to join startups i think things were back very very different back in the day um so to kick the conversation off uh, i'd love to learn about those early days how did the transition from gs to ninja card really happen how did you even discover something like ninja card existed and uh, what made you excited to join a very early stage startup back in the day sure uh, so i think i was pretty happy with what was happening at uh, uh, goldman sachs right so i i i really enjoyed building products there uh, uh, it was a very very good learning curve for me as an engineer uh, to work on the kind of technology stack uh, that uh, goldman had and uh, uh, pretty much very very exciting um but what really happened is i i used to stay with uh, one of my friends in a in a in a in an apartment and uh, he joined a startup uh, right after finishing his um, uh, mba uh and that was taxi for sure and uh after work we used to tra- start discussing about uh, what we do at work and like let's say what kind of products uh, we were building right um there was visibly a change uh, in the passion and and the kind of work that i was doing in 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 goldman versus let's say what uh, uh, this was this is way back in 2013 2014 that i'm talking about uh, where uh, indian startup ecosystem was also starting to um, uh, let's say uh, really really go uh, on a full throttle and uh, 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 flipkart ola uh, all all of uh, these startups were really make starting to make noise in india <coughs> and for me uh, the day i started realizing uh, that uh, how much one can create a impact uh, if you are part of a very very early stage startup versus being in a uh, very large organization uh, i think that was the pivotal moment for me uh, where i felt i am doing very very small things uh, but if i'm now uh, with with the skills that i've developed over the last uh, because by this time i've already done about 4 years of uh, engineering i felt if if i now join uh, the ecosystem is also ripe now and and uh, let's say if i now join a, a very early stage startup i will be able to shape the vision uh, of the uh, uh, let's say whatever problem statement right i, I was not keen on the problem statement but uh, what i was really keen on is getting into a, a, a very early stage startup and being able to shape 
uh, uh, the decisions within that uh, product problem, right? Uh, I think that that is what really excited me that I sh I could really go on to create something uh, within India, right? That that was really the pivotal moment for me. Interesting, interesting. And early days, how did you discover uh, what what where was Ninja Card when you joined them back in twenty? 15, 16. Yeah, so uh, the story is this, right? So one of the uh, uh, co-founders at uh, Ninja Cart, uh, uh, we are friends from uh, college. Uh, so he always wanted me to uh, join uh, Ninja Cart. Um, uh, so Ninja Cart has two histories. Uh, so it initially started like a B2C uh, company where uh, you can place an order on um, uh, Ninja Cart and uh, some, some rider would go pick it up from a nearby Kirana store and deliver to your house. Right? So we were actually a B2C company and uh, grocery delivery, grocery delivery hyper local uh, where you order from a nearby supermarket or a Kirana store, somebody would go pick up and, and deliver to you. Right? Uh, uh, that is how it all started. Uh, so first one year of Ninja Cart uh, between 20 to 2016, uh, it was a B2C startup, right? Uh, and 2016 is when <coughs> we pivoted into a B2B company where uh, we started procuring vegetables and fruits uh, for the Kirana stores. Um, and that's when I joined. Uh, so uh, now I felt uh, uh, it's a much larger uh, problem for India, where uh, today Kirana stores have to really wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning, go to a Mandi, bargain the price, check the quality, and buy. Instead, we are becoming the commerce layer for Kirana stores, where every day night, if they order what they want, uh, morning by 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., uh, somebody would deliver uh, them, right? And uh, very, very conceptual at this point. When I'm joining Ninja Kite, uh, uh, I, 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 <coughs> I don't even think we have, let's say, delivered to about 100 customers, right? So uh, uh, we were in the pretty, pretty early stages of, let's say, how do we procure vegetables and fruits in bulk and deliver them before 9 a.m. to Kirana? That, that's, that's the problem statement for which I came in. Got it. <coughs> when you were joining Ninja Card, were there other opportunities also you were exploring or did this come through more organically? I'm trying to understand, okay, you know, for someone who's listening in, who's at Big Tech, excited about startup, what is a path that lies ahead? For them? I'm sure in 2015-16, the ecosystem was different. In your case, like you mentioned, one of the founders was a friend. But for someone else who's excited about startup, has been, you know, somewhere there in the ecosystem for a couple of years. Um, are there any pathways that you suggest for people to start looking? looking see, at see, my personal opinion on this is uh, has always been uh, uh, go for the team more than the uh, problem statement. Uh, identify people whom you can work along with. Uh, so, uh, I think that plays a very, very uh, larger role in you uh, be because the idea might change, right? Like, let's say uh, I might have come for some pro problem statement, uh, and then eventually, let's say uh, I might uh, end up doing something, right? So, I think <clears throat> talk to more like minded people uh, who are actually passionate to solve something. Uh, uh, don't focus too much on the idea because uh, what I have understood over the last eight years is. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, you're building something what the uh, customer wants and that can eventually change completely from what you started. Uh, so don't attach yourself completely to the idea. Uh, talk to more like-minded people uh, who want to do something, who are very passionate about creating something in India uh, or even globally, right? Like uh, there, are, there are startups now uh, which are solving for global problems from India, right? So, so uh, uh, pick, pick the team that you really want to uh, work with, uh, start brainstorming. Uh, how how if if I was to solve this particular problem in India, how would I go about solving it, right? And uh, even in my personal uh, uh, thing, uh, that is how it started. It was not about doing Ninja Cut, right? Like me and the uh, the, the co-founder at Ninja Cut today, we actually uh, started brainstorming. If we both were to start up something. Uh, what would that idea be? We even went on to take our weekends to start writing docs on like what would that startup be? Uh, and I still remember uh, we did the first coding. Uh, we we wanted to see if we both can work together for a long time and and build a startup, right? So, continue to uh, take weekends out, uh, uh, get people uh, who are like-minded, and and start uh, brainstorming and an idea. Uh, by the time you would have already found out, let's say, if, if the people that you are bringing along, are you able to work along with them? Uh, are you able to think through uh, what's the frequency at which you are able to think through something? I think <coughs> all of them will become much more clear. So, so I think the, the step is to uh, find like-minded people first uh, whom you can uh, uh, work with. 
if you are starting up right um, uh, or you are joining a very very early stage uh, uh, startup now in india yeah. i would say that would be the first step that i would like people to take i think that's a very interesting point i just if you were to double click um, how do you go about finding like minded or interesting people like in your case maybe the college connect helped but if you have seen other journeys around you what are what are some things that work for people see i think uh, uh, for most of the uh, let's say uh, connects that i have seen right uh, are either people have known each other from uh, college uh, but also these days today um, uh, i feel uh, the biggest thing that you can do is you're already part of a company uh you already have let's say uh, people around you you have a uh, cto who's helping you you have an architect who's helping you or you have a analytics person whom you are working with in whatever organization uh, you are already in right whether you are part of a st- existing startup or you are part of a large organization uh but you have that circle uh, uh, apart from your college circle that you have had interactions in the past but you definitely have people in your company right and 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 uh, today uh, all the mafia that we talk about the paypal mafia the flipkart mafia and all of that uh, even at ninja card like let's say we have eventually let's say had people who were uh, within ninja card but now have let's say formed a group and 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 start started up on their own right mm-hmm. i think because office is also <coughs> you spend a lot of time yeah. uh, at, at the end of it like you have a lot of time right and and you pick up people you you start talking about let's say something and and some somebody might be really passionate about it and and somewhere around the line uh, you would uh, pick up right and i i feel uh, of course there are other things like let's say you can go to a product meet up uh, go to some uh, conferences and all of that uh, but that i feel is very difficult to do <coughs> but what is definitely uh, very easy to do is uh, you start uh, you have a lot of people in office you start talking about it and somewhere something will spark yeah no, i completely agree i feel like we spend anywhere between 30 to 50% of our entire day and if you consider just the waking hours you spend a lot more of that percentage just in office so uh, if you work at a good organization there are smart people around you just need to keep jamming and you never know what yeah. comes out of it i think that's a great idea so in in case i didn't have the other co-founder yeah. uh, i was definitely talking to a lot of people at my office in goldman to let's say see what can we do how can we go about solving for something nice did you always have that entrepreneurial stint like because i think you were going out of your way apart from what your daily job was entailing um, those were there from the early days right regardless of you joining this also do you think somewhere that has also shaped up was that always there as part of your dna or did that come through see yeah, i wouldn't say uh, i had an entrepreneurial uh, uh, bug in me that i i wanted to uh, 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 go into a startup initially uh, but uh, the <clears throat> the one thing that i'll say was always was i was always curious to uh, do new things uh, uh, even at goldman uh, i would pick up uh, very special projects which which were not part of my uh, daily work uh, i would always wanted to do something new um uh, because i i really couldn't uh, uh, just just keep myself normal in in getting just the day work done i would always read about more things what's happening uh, with startups in india what's happening globally uh, how are they able to build such world class products so i think something or the other <clears throat> always i i i wanted to do something new so i i would say i never felt i should become a, a founder at some point or i wanted to uh, let's say uh, 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 definitely start something on my own these kind of thoughts were initially not there but the one thing that i was always sure is uh, i have to keep doing something new uh, uh, and not just uh, keep doing normal stuff always uh and eventually i i found the path right uh, because i wanted to do some something new there was someone who was doing something very passionately then the thought came why don't i go join that person and and then uh, create that right so i think that is how my uh, uh, journey started it was not like at college i had that clarity uh, i have to go and start up at some point no i i did not have that yeah got it got it no thanks for sharing that harish <coughs> talking about the early days of ninja card how big was the team when you came in like you mentioned it was just the starting of the b2b vertical sure so so when i uh, came in uh, to ninja card uh, probably we would have been about 100 employees uh, okay. because we also had a lot of operation folks who used to go and deliver uh, we had people at the uh, uh, let's say warehouses who used to pick grade items uh, mm-hmm. pick vegetables and pack right uh but if you talk about uh the uh team that i used to work with so i i i started leading the uh, engineering team when i uh, came in right um uh we just had about 7 uh 
uh, passionate uh, tech developers at that point and, and I came in to, uh, let's say, lead them at that point, right? Uh, and uh, probably about two product managers okay. and about two, three analytics folks. Uh, that is all. Uh, okay. And, and um, uh, that is how it all started, right? With just seven tech guys, uh, two product managers and about two analytics folks. Very interesting. And if I were to compare that to today, how big is the tech product and engineering team? See, today we would be about uh, about 150 uh, developers uh, and about uh, 35 uh, product managers. Uh, that would be our size today. The ratio is also pretty interesting, right? One is to four, one is to five on product and engineering. So I, I, I'll tell you why that is the case, right? So uh, it was not this uh, one year back. Uh, it was not this two years back. Uh, but today uh, the ratio is that because today we are on a lot of new ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are, uh, uh, as Ninja Card, we are, let's say, uh, trying to shape up a lot of zero to one ideas. Uh, so I feel whenever we are embarking on a, a journey to, let's say, build a lot of zero to one ideas, we need to first put in the product bandwidth uh, to, let's say, uh, create uh, or, or envision the new products that we want to build. So yeah. today, as we speak, the ratio is this okay. because uh, there, are, there are a lot of stable businesses that we already have but we are also embarking on a lot of new businesses for which we are putting people to understand what is the scope uh, uh, is this really something uh, there is value uh, and and there are pmf stages that we have not hit and at that time i feel bringing in a lot of product managers to find out the new use cases that we want to build on we need that power uh, within the uh, product manager group yeah interesting i think for more zero to one stuff that's why the ratio of pd um, Back to the early days, I think you mentioned, okay, early days, 10, 15 member team. Um, when you came in, maybe 100 orders, how many orders a day that you all were doing? Uh, yeah, about 100 orders a day, you are right. Yeah, that's that would be the thing, right? So, uh, see, I, I, I think at that time, uh, the interesting fact that I would like to share is, uh, I think that there was no demarcation that somebody is tech, somebody is product, somebody is uh, analytics, right? Like... Uh, uh, we were everything. Uh, I, I remember, uh, let's say, going and doing sales. Uh, uh, we would build something, uh, deploy it in the night, morning, go do, do sales. Uh, find sales out would be to a Kirana store? To a Kirana store saying that now you don't have to go to the Mandi. Now you can uh, pick up the app, Ninja Cart, make them install the app, make them see how they are able to navigate through the app and like place their first order. Mm -hmm. uh, so do, uh, let's say, sales uh, in the morning. And then even do customer support, uh, let's say, uh, in the night to make them place the order. And the next day morning, again, see if really delivery happened, or, uh, happened on time or not. Is the customer happy or not? Uh, go to a warehouse and see, uh, let's say, how your supply chain products that you're building, whether the labor uh, at the warehouse is able to use the app or is it really creating a fiction? Because uh, uh, the, the one thing that we need to understand is, see, you cannot build a product just because you want to track something or, let's say, uh, you feel that uh, that gives a cohesive flow, right? It, at the end of the day, the person who's using it uh, should also feel that it's adding value in either picking an item or grading an item or packing an item, right? So I think we were very, very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, focused in the initial days to ensure that you have to be everything. Uh, 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 and and uh, I would say the first two years is a continuous hackathon, right? Like, uh, it's not like uh, 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 you have a relaxed thing where you deploy something to production and then like see for the next two days uh, what is happening. That kind of a scenario doesn't exist, right? Like, the entire two years is like a hackathon. Uh, uh, you have to every day uh, be awake 24 hours. Anything can break any time. Yeah. Uh, the, the processes are not matured. Uh, we, I, I remember we didn't even have a great uh, deployment cycle. Anybody from their laptop can uh, just push into production at any point in time. And I think, I think that kind of a speed and uh, experimentation uh, was needed uh, during the initial days because we were also understanding like what does the customer want? How do they really uh, uh, perceive this solution? Does this have a pan-India scale? Yeah. All of these are questions that are lurk lurking in our uh, head also, right? So when you are in that state, uh, we definitely optimize for speed. Uh, <clears throat> did not put in a lot of structure, framework, um, uh, code review process, all of that, right? Find PMF. Uh, get sure, make sure that, let's say, uh, we have something that we can scale to multiple cities. So I think it, I, I would say the <coughs> first two years at Nanjagat was definitely uh, uh, like a two-year hackathon for me. It's very interesting. Do you remember some of the early stories where you might have gone <clears throat> pushed out, you know, a release and shown it to a customer. Uh, I'm curious, in 15, 16, were Kirana store owners open to ordering something like this off the app? What are some pushbacks that you got from the market? See, I think, uh, 
Yeah, fifteen sixteen. I I feel the uh, journey was very difficult. Um, uh, the users, uh, of course, every customer segment will have a bunch of early adopters. Yeah. So <clears throat> they were very keen in picking up an app and ordering and all of that. <coughs> oh, what is the USP to them? Was it convenience? Was it like we're going to give you the same price or even better price than the market? What was the USP? So it was both uh, better price than the mandi uh, because we were actually skipping the legs. Uh, so we're directly buying from a farmer and we were delivering to the Kirana. The so, so the margin was there to give it, pass it back to the retailer. So one was definitely better price, and two, it was more convenient also. Right? Like imagine somebody every day who is running a vegetable store mm -hmm. has to wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning, go to uh, the KR Market or Kalaspalaya Market in Bangalore. Uh, it is always crowded. You can't even enter the mandi with a vehicle. You can't exit the uh, mandi with a vehicle, right? You have to really barely walk by, and everybody will sell a different item. So if you want to buy cabbage, you need to go somewhere. If you want to buy onion, you need to go somewhere. It was a mess, right? Uh, so definitely convenience and price was the uh, uh, moat. Um, and uh, so, so the initial days, right? To come back to your question, right? So the initial days, uh, uh, there were definitely a segment of early adopters uh, who you don't have to do anything. Every day evening at 6 p.m., they would pick up the app, they would order. You don't even have to give them a, a call to remind them or anything, right? Uh, so, so we we put on multiple efforts. So we put our sales guys on the beat. Uh, so they would go on to the customer and say what would be your order, right? Like so, we created some kind of a, a behavior uh, in customers ordering through that. Then we built an internal uh, customer call center where every day at 8 p.m. there would be a call going to the customer. So instead of making them order, we used to uh, have a central dashboard for our uh, internal calling people who would call them and take the order, right? Mm. And from that, we kept on understanding like who are the early adopters who are able to do by themselves, who expects a call. And slowly, that behavior, uh, we kept on adding people who can do it by themselves. Uh, it is not like you just launch and, and everybody starts ordering on their own, right? Like we had to really segment customers into uh, really multiple cohorts mm. <coughs> and understand who was able to do on their own, who was uh, needing a, a sales support to go and visit, who was needing a calling support, right? Ba back in that. But I think now uh, um, maybe this is the same case in a tier 3, tier 4 city. Mm. Uh, but uh, a city like, uh, let's say, a Bangalore or a Chennai or a Hyderabad, I feel um, uh, things have moved much, much ahead than what I could have envisioned, uh, let's say, uh, four or five years back. Mm -hmm. uh, there are much more startups now uh, working on solving for Kirana, uh, even simple things like Paytm and uh, Google Pay, which they use daily to receive their money, that has created a revolution. So people now uh, check their balances uh, in that app, uh, so they understand, uh, let's say, what money is inflowing, outflowing. There are <clears throat> marketplaces on which people have started ordering. And uh, given the OTT revolution, all of that, I, I think the smartphone penetration, uh, so I, I remember in those days, uh, there, there were customers which we wanted to onboard, but did not have a smartphone. Uh, we were really thinking of a program, uh, should we uh, launch a program where we give them smartphones and then collect EMIs uh, from them, uh, let's say, uh, to make them download Ninjakata app, right? Like, yeah. I, that's the era that I'm talking about in 2050, right? But now I don't think we talk these things. Uh, uh, maybe in a Tier 3, Tier 4 city, yes, uh, this is still a challenge uh, in terms of adopting the product, but I don't think the smartphone is a problem. People do have a smartphone because they receive money on uh, Paytm, Google Pay, and all of that, yeah. right? So I think I think it's been, it's been a fantastic journey uh, in the last four or five uh, uh, years where... Uh, of course, the geo revolution has, has made the internet cheaper. Uh, uh, people are now uh, consuming more data than ever. Uh, so I, I think that way, um, uh, the problems that we used to have in the past where internet and smartphone itself was a problem, and then uh, will people adopt our product was a problem. Today, I think the smartphone and internet is no longer a problem. Uh, uh, in, in And in Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities, I feel even adoption is not a problem, uh, at least on the Kirana side. We'll come to other user segments like Farmer, uh, Mandi and all of that. But at least on the Kirana side, I think uh, that option is no longer a problem. Yeah, and I think that's the segment that I was going to come to next. I think, but this is a very interesting point, right? I think the ecosystem evolved pretty quickly post-2016. So a lot of the challenges that uh, were on the infra side from you know the data point of view or the education to some of these user segments on how to use a smartphone or how to use the internet, that part got solved, which really accelerated your progress, at least on this segment, right? Yeah. But uh, exactly the two other segments that you mentioned, one was the Mundi segment and next come the farmers, which I think 
probably would have been you know a step further in terms of adoption um, how did it look like from their point of view i think in the mondays you were you were essentially disrupting their flow right you were skipping that flow did you have some pushbacks there and then probably we'll talk sure so 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 back till let's say 2020 uh, uh, we were not operating in the mandi at all right like our supply chain was a parallel supply chain to the mandi right so we would procure from uh, let's say a farmer uh, or the farmer would come to a collection center in the village okay. drop their produce and we would then forward to a fulfillment center in our uh, let's say warehouse in in a primary city and then from there it would go to micro distribution centers right. and from there it would get delivered to the kirana right like this is this is so this was a parallel supply chain to the mandi so till 2020 we don't have anything built for the mandi users at all so we'll first cover the how let's say uh, the farmer right i think uh see farmer also is a very very interesting uh, solve for us right like at ninja card if you ask me uh, what is the uh, let's say uh, most difficult thing that we had to uh, solve for initially uh, the the demand was not a problem mm-hmm. uh, the, the supply uh, is where the problem was right so let alone the product uh, uh, even as a business value proposition uh, whether farmers are comfortable in giving their produce to a startup like uh, ninja card um, the initial trust was not there yeah uh, they they wouldn't trust uh, because they have a network already they have somebody called a transporter who would pick from them they would go put it in the mandi and then the mandi people would pay them back after a few days right this was the supply chain that was happening in india uh, but people like reliance and all of them have in some shape or form have tried to disrupt this because to their stores they uh, do this right yeah Uh, so initially the trust was not there right like so the first 2 3 years was not even about solving for the product adoption of uh, let's say um let's say uh, of the farmer but it it was even about solving for the business value proposition right why would they walk in and give it to a collection center at ninja cart and not really use the mandi supply chain right i think that is where most of our time was spent uh, so I, i remember back in those days Uh, uh we used to have a product flow where we wanted to get the bank account details uh, let's say collected by our uh, sales person uh-huh. <clears throat> where we would ask for their passbook or let's say we would ask for their account number and key it in our app and we would send one rupee which we call the penny drop feature mm-hmm. to understand if the account really belongs to the farmer or someone else right mm-hmm. and there we uh, there would be there would be much much apprehension right they, they they would not want to share the bank account details with some 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 sales guy who's coming and asking them right um i think from that point uh, let's say where there was not any trust we had to work on a <coughs> lot of things uh, to create the trust first we, we used to do farmer festivals talk them about like let's say how ninja card can add value to them and and slowly create the trust among the farmers that this is going to add value to you because we will definitely pay you on time we will pay you better than what the mandi is paying right uh, this was the value proposition to them initially if you told them that hey we're going to be paying you more than what the mandi gives you isn't that good enough for value prop or were they not trusting some new player see the thing in india that you have to understand is uh, uh, emotion uh, takes over uh, let's yeah. say uh, a lot of logical things right um, see there has been somebody who's been giving you uh money uh, uh let's say for years right and suddenly you come and say that i'll be able to give you more money it is not just that uh let's say fact for which uh, let's say they will uh, hop on to you right because the problem is they have much more personal connection with the other person yeah. uh, they might have helped them for their uh, a situation where there was a marriage and they wanted some loan they would have taken a loan from them uh, they they wanted to buy a tractor they would have uh, got it funded from someone right so see in india everything is just not logical right like you need to apply the emotional uh, uh, let's say factor also on top of it to really understand will someone do that hop immediately or is it a long game by which they will do the hop because they currently have some bonding and 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 network and it's not easy to uh, let's say break that immediately right so you really need to work on understanding let's say what is that can we be that mm-hmm. uh can we offer tractor loans these were all discussions that we were having back in those days to see how we can uh, enter the space got it and what are some early wins that you all had what what did what really work for you well okay hey this is a playbook that we can really go out there adopt and get more i think uh, uh, if you ask me the biggest uh, thing for me was uh, really uh, hiring uh, a, a son of the soil right like uh, let's say somebody whom they can relate to as the let's say uh, the collection center manager or let's say the uh, the procurement executive which we used to call right so i think 
hiring somebody uh, uh, there who can build trust locally right like see because you sitting here cannot build trust everywhere right uh, at the end of the day you need to have somebody who's a son of the soil there who's able to let's say uh, talk to farmers tell them like say what is the value proposition because in this case we said the money will hit your bank the next day hmm. so it's a it's a it's a, so if you come give your produce at at a ninja cart warehouse you will get your money uh, the next day right speak their language their tone uh, and and then like let's say communicate right i think that <coughs> would be my uh, primary uh, learning so initially it was not that we would hire somewhere and put somewhere yeah. uh, right like and, and then that person would not be able to connect with the uh, farmers but then we understood like let's say what should be our hiring process who can really uh, pull off this and that kind of helped us to uh, seed the platform uh, that's yeah. what i would say yeah. very interesting so is that um, something that helped you even today is that a process that you follow like okay at a yeah. you know multiple smaller regions you keep hiring some yeah people. see because the <coughs> challenge with uh, india is uh, uh, it's very very diverse right like yeah. it's very very fragmented and it's very very diverse yeah. uh, so you need to adopt some of these strategies something that worked in gujarat this is really not going to work for you in tamil nadu uh, or something in hyderabad right so so you really need to <coughs> come up with these micro uh solutions yeah. which is very very specific uh, to that particular geography right uh, you need to continuously have people who can give you those inputs and you have to solve for it yeah what well, are other players in the market that post it like for example if i were to start a marketplace today i know there are enough players in the market there are some playbooks that help you get started but i think back then there wasn't as much activity at least in the b2b segment of agritech um so what were you looking forward to as inspiration where would you take your learnings from or was it entirely from first principles here see yeah. I, i at least feel that was a boon uh, we were really let's say able to uh, uh, let's say innovate a lot on the supply chain on uh, let's say the right way to uh, move the item in india because uh see so it was not even something like uh, starting ola or uh, flipkart right because you don't even have a global comparison let alone comparison in uh, let's say uh, india uh, uh, we did not even have a uh, let's say uh, uh, a global comparison to draw inspiration and and probably fast pace our uh, thing right um so i'll tell you what is so unique about india first right see uh, india is the only country where uh, both in a in a agri supply chain both the supply side and the demand side is so fragmented so what i mean by that is every farmer uh, owns let's say about less than just average uh, let's say about 2 acres of land which means the produce is going to be very very small every kirana store is not like a walmart store or a costco store right like every kirana store is is sitting in a 150 by 150 square feet uh, space and and just trying to uh, use their own rented space or their own home space to let's say do a thing right so which means there are so many demand points to which the item has to reach there are so many let's say uh, points from which the produce has to come from right so so it's about 120 million farmers and about 12 million uh, let's say kiran on this side right no other country in the world uh, let's say would have this kind of a fragmentation right like everywhere it would be much more concentrated if you go to a, a us or a china uh, uh, <clears throat> there will be large industrialist who loan acres of acres of land mm-hmm. and their output is largely tied to uh, let's say a large uh, corporate again to buy it right like somebody like a walmart somebody like a costco <coughs> would have running orders against the large let's say industrialist who are owning the uh, farming land and it it's like a forward contract that they would have to let's say Uh, ensure the supply chain works right there is no uh, real consolidation at any place right so so we couldn't draw inspiration from any other supply chain in the world right mm-hmm. we really had to uh, let's say uh, sit back think why does the market exist today so uh, uh, india has over the years evolved into a stage where farmers come uh, bring their produce to a market mm-hmm. an auction happens there price gets decided there based on the quality variety uh, and everything and then uh, after that kirana walks into the market so so market has become like a, a central point for farmers can come and give their produce and kirana can come and uh, buy or consumer like you and me also can walk into the market and buy right so this is how i think the uh, uh, let's say uh, india uh, indian uh, agri has evolved right then we need to understand like why it evolved like this 
why 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 is there a market in uh, let's say kalasipalaya in bangalore why is there a market in uh, madiwala right? like we need to go and understand the first principles first like wh yeah. why did it get formed there it could have get got formed anywhere right like wh wh is is that because that's the entry to uh, bangalore uh is that because let's say uh that's where a large space was available so we really need to understand like what is the fundamentals in in each of this and <clears throat> then if we are doing it now let's say today there is a tech capability there is a very different uh let's say logistics uh, that is available now how would you kind of let's say uh, uh, break this right that is the uh, uh, let's say way that we would approach every problem it is not like okay this is how let's say uber has solved it in other countries yeah. this is how amazon has solved it in other countries we did not have <coughs> any such inspiration got it were the traditional players that you would look up to some supply chain for example like you mentioned the reliance example um, it maybe then do it in a tech first approach but uh, definitely had some amount of distribution from a retail to farmer perspective were there some learnings from that definitely yes so we we did understand some of the other uh, players see more than that uh, uh, what we also did is uh, so we used to run this uh, thing called uh, uh, day of your life right like uh, so what we used to do we really used to go to a mandi mm -hmm. and shadow uh, let's say a mandi owner on let's say how he talks to farmers how he let's say uh, uh make sure that he supplies always guaranteed how does he forward his demand forward right <coughs> i think we started working on a, a, a lot of such things where we used to be in the mandi to understand let's like, say how uh, things work and from there on uh, uh, we used to say okay this is how somebody is trying to uh, let's say captivate their uh, supply and this is how let's say they have a continuous demand right i think that's where we drew more inspiration from got it and you mentioned till 2020 you weren't really looking at the mandi owners as a segment right did you and you were essentially trying to disrupt the mandi segment right because you were trying to connect the farmers directly to the end so did you face some pushback when you were going learning and where did the entire focus in 2020 come to okay solve for mandi as well okay right so see then uh, really what really happened uh, 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 see we became the largest uh, let's say uh, uh, let's say b2b company procuring vegetables and fruits from mm -hmm. let's say uh, farmers mm -hmm. and delivering it to the uh, kirana right um, uh, so we 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 were really doing well uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, it, it was a great journey i would say in terms of uh, getting the right set of investors getting the right money uh, that was needed to let's say build this ecosystem we had the right tech product uh, culture at at ninja car to uh, let's say uh, build this uh, entire space right i think i think this all was uh, uh, great for us right like from the day that we were just delivering uh, let's say um, uh, 100 <coughs> orders uh, to reaching the point where we really cross 1000 tons of vegetables and fruits delivered in a single day i think that peak was uh, amazing to us right but what we also started realizing is if we want to let's say uh, build a very large organization right? and and that is some of our aspiration right? like see we are not uh, here to solve a very sp small problem statement in india we really wanted to let's say solve for something very very large right so then we felt <clears throat> we cannot just be a parallel supply chain we also want to work with everybody in the agri ecosystem uh and how do we let's say understand like what's happening in each of the ecosystem uh, let's say that is there right like say and and the one thing that you need to understand is uh every category of item has a very very different supply chain in india right like yeah. for example an onion supply chain is very different from a potato a potato would go sit in a cold storage for 6 months and then only whenever the price is good let's say it comes for a auction and then it gets sold right a, a pomegranate might have a very different supply chain and a mango uh, might have a very different supply chain right so what we really um, <clears throat> understood uh, post let's say uh, uh, 2020 is we need to build this current business model into a very large scale where let's say um, we acquire more customers we do a lot of things but also why don't we partner with uh, any agri player that we today are not playing with for example a mandi owner or a cold storage storage owner or a varos uh, or a processor of a mais right how do we form teams within ninja cart so that is when uh, i would say the pod culture at ninja cart also started being we started creating smaller pods which were independent units which have all the decision power and all the capability right like it would have a tech person it would have an analytics person it would have a product business marketing everybody put together how can they pick up a problem statement 
outside of let's say the parallel supply chain that we were building they can go work with processors they can go work with mandi owners they can go work with cold storage owners they can work with multiple people and identify what are the other problems that exist in that ecosystem yeah. and can be solved for that right? because india is so big that how much ever you do that you cannot let's say <coughs> become the single player who's producing or procuring all the vegetables and fruits and delivering it to kirana right like so why don't we approach in both direction so that is when we started working with all the other uh, let's say players uh, uh, at uh, let's say the agri custom and today our vision has also transformed to uh, uh, let's say see uh, our original vision was just to add more value to farmers and let's say oh, uh, let's say add more value to uh, the kirana but today if you ask our our vision has transformed into uh, and and this is the one liner <coughs> right better lives for every agri citizens in india nice so how do we let's say find out every agri citizen uh, let's say who is some shape or form involved in the agri ecosystem how do we create better lives for them uh, that could be because you are giving them a credit facility that could be because you have made their operations easier that could be because you have got them new connections on commerce because of which they are earning more margins right now our last 2 years or 3 years journey has been to work with every agri citizens and find out what can we add as value for somebody it could just be digitization for somebody it could be creating connections right so i think we have in the last 3 years which is what i am pretty excited about now is is we have really found more use cases to solve for rather than just focusing on one particular supply chain very interesting does, the, does this also tie back to your early <coughs> early insight on why there are more product managers are there lots of these zero to one initiatives going on exactly so around 2020 and 2021 is when we realized ninja cart is going to hop on to multiple uh, such uh, ideas uh, and we need that firepower uh, in terms of solutioning in terms of let's say being able to try out new things and and uh, give that uh, ability for people to try out new things uh that is when we said with just 7 10 product managers we are never going to get there uh, just running the current supply chain itself would need uh, uh, let's say more people <coughs> so why don't we uh, really uh, hire a lot of people put them uh, on such problem statements we only gave them a vision uh, we really did not say uh, this particular persona has this particular problem how could we solve for it right? nothing like that so we gave a very very large statement ask people to go to mandis go to cold storage go to uh, let's say and and figure out what are the challenges that are still unsolved for and how can we really solve for it in 2024 out of these multiple problem statement if you were to pick three three things you were really excited about uh, just from a problem space point of view um, it could be within the ninja cart journey you know some of these products that you all are building what are the top 3 that that you personally are very excited about so uh, it's it's not what i am excited about i think the entire org is excited about uh, so uh, these are the three themes that uh, we are really trying to solve for right uh, so one uh, the credit angle right so the entire agri ecosystem uh, in india or or rather any b2b uh, ecosystem in india right like largely works on credit which means somebody is putting their working capital to let's say buy an item uh, and selling it on credit forward right. for example let's say i am a, a trader in nashik yeah. i would take let's say 25 tons of onion uh, from a farmer the farmer needs to get the money immediately yeah. the farmer will never give you the item without taking the money for that the farmer would get the uh, money immediately which means my me as a nashik trader i have already put my working capital onto it right but now i might be able to sell this down to bangalore let's say only 3 days down the line and then let's say there is a 4 day transit period in which the item travels from nashik to bangalore and then <clears throat> once the item receives in bangalore also again it may take 2 3 days for it to sell in the bangalore market right, right. so assume there is a 7 to 10 day period where <clears throat> i i as a nashik trader has to let's say deploy my working capital right so at this point of time it is the nashik trader who's put the money forward exactly right and and then he is forwarding it on credit right okay. uh now after the sale has happened the bangalore uh, let's say trader would pay him back and that's when he gets the money but then now he would have made extra margin like so the the point at which he bought from the farmer to what money is receiving from the uh, let's say uh, uh, trader in bangalore 
he would have made his margin right but he is also losing uh, the working capital uh, he cannot buy more because he can only put so much of working capital he cannot he doesn't have infinite uh, let's say capacity to keep putting the working capital right so <clears throat> This is very different in each of the ecosystems. So now I talked about an onion ecosystem, but like in a uh, let's say potato, it's very different to how it happens in pomegranate, to how it happens in mango, which is a very seasonal fruit, right? So it's it, the the ecosystem is very very uh, diverse here. So the, to come back to your question on the three themes, the first theme is is definitely credit. Mm -hmm. We are working on the credit angle to see how we can work with let's say lending partners and make sure we solve for the credit problem that any trader or any farmer. Or Kirana, it could be anybody. Right? Like Basically, they get more leverage, so they're not stuck because of working capital. Yeah. That so that's that's the first theme that we're trying to solve. Yeah. The second theme that we're trying to solve is, we call it commerce within uh, Ninja Card, right? The the second theme is really. See, there is no clear marketplace, uh, let's say, uh, that exists where uh, there are sellers on one side and there are buyers on one side and then like I can post my uh, requirement and somebody would look at an app and, and let's say connect to you, right? Today, how this works is <clears throat> there are already existing connections. So, think of it like a node and let's say uh, there are traders in, uh, let's say, Nasik and, and they would, let's say, uh, know 10 people in, let's say, Bangalore, 5 people in Hyderabad and they would know 10 people in Kerala, right? And they continue to work with the same set of trusted people. <clears throat> uh, and, and the point with this is there is a lot of information asymmetry, right? Like, for example, uh, if I was buying from Nasik, I always continue to buy from Nasik. Mm. I don't know there is another source in Satara which can give me, let's say, cheaper onions. Mm. Uh, so, what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand the entire network mm. and see how we can help in creating new connections. How can we, let's say... <clears throat> go on to build the network in a way where we are forming these new connections. So, so commerce is the next angle that we are trying to solve for where we create new connections. You do that to a certain extent today, right? But not at a marketplace model. Is that what is happening today? No, we are trying to build a marketplace model and, and we are largely, let's say last two years, we have been able to uh, prove a lot of things and in, again, right, like we have not proved it in every category. Right. There are categories that we have been able to penetrate very deep and, and create new connections and there are customer stories where, let's say we have doubled their income from what they were to now because of the offering on uh, let's say credit and commerce because of credit we are able to increase their leverage uh, yeah. right yeah. and because of we forming those new connections because let's say just giving money yeah. doesn't mean that let's say you can form new connections yeah. so we have to help them create the new connections also yeah. so that is how let's say we are creating the uh, commerce, commerce piece right and the third theme that we are working on is information <clears throat> so all of these uh, let's say persona right they need, uh, let's say, a lot of uh, information to decide. Uh, uh, let's say, for a farmer, it could be whether should I sow uh, cabbage this uh, uh, season or should I do chili, right? Yeah. For a mandi owner, <clears throat> should I stock up potato now? Is this the right buying point for me? And should I hold it for six months or should I sell it now? For a uh, trader sitting in, in Bangalore, which is the uh, price point at Nasik, what is the price point at Satara, what is the price point at Indar, where should I buy my item from, right? So, so there's a lot of information play and today all of this is, is, is either happening through phone calls. Somebody in Bangalore would sit and call 10 traders across the country to ask what is the going price in uh, Nasik. Hmm. Uh, or it's certain WhatsApp groups that they have where they keep posting, okay, in Nasik today, this is the going price. In yeah. Indo today, this is the going price, right? Or very recently, <clears throat> what we're seeing, there are these in YouTube influencers, let's say, who are posting videos from Nasik, who have a, uh, let's say, downstream uh, viewers from, let's say, Bangalore or Chennai to understand, like, let's say, what's happening in Nasik, yeah. right? Now, these are the mediums in which the information is uh, getting percolated about what is the ongoing price of onion because it's a, it's a very complex uh, thing, right? Like, if you are a buyer, mm -hmm. for you to decide where to buy from at what price range to uh, uh, decide is, is a very uh, complex math to do today, right? And, and today, because they don't have all the information, they are taking, uh, let's say, the decision based on what information information they have. Yeah. What we are trying to do is we are trying to supplement that information with a lot more, uh, let's say, uh, information that we can source. Mm -hmm. How can we become an information layer if anybody wants to decide a buy or a sell? How can NinjaCard help them in taking a better decision? That's a very interesting. So now today you are a fintech commerce layer as well as I think lots of data and some amount of AI play to understand and give them more targeted information on how to take. So, it's basically you're moving from an analytic clear to more of an insight clear, which will help them, you know, take better decisions. See, that's the large vision, uh, Suha. So, we really want to get to a stage where um, uh, any 
let's say uh, trade that happens in uh, India uh, by a farmer, by a trader, by a let's say mandi owner or by a kirana, uh -huh. we want to touch them in some place. Either we would be offering a credit solution to them or we would be the one who is creating the connection in terms of the buy and sell or we would at least be an information layer for them to decide. Right. So, so we want to be that <coughs> layer where any trade uh, that happens in India between these agri citizens, we, we should have either played a credit role there or a commerce role there or an information role there. Very interesting. When you have a diverse set of products being built, um, I would love to understand your day to day also. How does that look like? Um, one from an org structure point of view, um, does all of this then roll up, or how does it work at Ninja Cut? And how do you divide? How does your day look like? Yeah, so so I think uh, uh, this is the problem that we envisioned, uh, let's say uh, back then, right? Like let's say uh, the moment you start focusing on multiple persona, yeah. where you're talking about farmer, trader, uh, a global importer, exporter. You're talking about a Kirana owner. You're talking about let's say people, our sales team using our own apps, right? Mm -hmm. So you have very very diverse set of uh, persona, and you're working also on varied categories. So one day you're trying to let's say solve for uh, a tomato as a supply chain, one day you're trying to solve for let's say pomegranate, one day you're talking about how can I crack uh, let's say mango, right? So so what we realized is uh, this was a very complex uh, matrix, right? Like let's say you're working across very different persona and categories also very very different, right? Like a farmer in pomegranate has to be let's say treated very differently from a farmer in let's say cabbage, right? Because one is a very short lived item, one is a, a very different supply chain, right? So we realized that the way to set up this team is, is not by having someone centrally deciding for everything, uh, it will not work. So we really need to create a structure where we form independent teams who work on individual ecosystem. For example, somebody is going to work on farmers for a bunch of categories. Somebody is going to work on traders. Somebody is going to work on global import and export. Somebody is going to work on Kirana, right? So we created these individual pods, uh, which have, uh, uh, let's say, all the decision making power. And let's say all, so, so so we only tell them the end vision, right? Like what we really want to become, right? And and they have all the, uh, let's say, firepower to decide, to experiment <coughs> and look at the outcomes and, and move on, right? Um, so I think, I think that kind of a structure uh, is what, uh, of course, depending upon the state at which they are in, we have different type of review mechanisms with each of the team in, in terms of understanding what they tried, how did it work, and what is a win and what is a failure, right? What does that pod look like? Is it a PM, an analytics, a design, engineering? Yeah. How does that look like? It will be a bunch of product managers, it will be a bunch of designers, it will be a bunch of analytics. And the number of people uh, in the pod really depends upon the size or the, the maturity that they have. If, if they are very, very zero to one, it may just have one or two PMs along with the designer and, and one solution person, right? But if it has already started doing a, a lot of MAU and MMU, then then we would um, uh, kind of put in more people, right? Like So, so the allocation is also uh, based on, let's say, how much, how far they have come in the journey of solving it. But, but what we decided is if, if this has to really work, uh, it cannot be like say centrally uh, a few folks giving direction to let's say 10 different ecosystems, 10 different persona. Uh, we really need to create those uh, structures where independently people are able to go and experiment, come back with results. Uh, <clears throat> we only have a review mechanism with them. De de somebody might have a weekly review, somebody might have a monthly review, somebody might even have quarterly depending upon let's say uh, uh, how well they have gone uh, deep into that. And how does how do these roll up to where you're at? Like, how does that look like on a weekly basis? Um, do you have these rolling up into say GPMs and then directors then into you? How does that org structure look like? So, uh, uh, largely every pod would have a, a GPM or a director uh, owning. So every pod, uh, depending upon the size and scale that they're solving for, we would have a GPM or a uh, uh, let's say director owning that. Uh, and uh, at a company level, I, I, I am responsible for certain pods. Mm -hmm. uh, the CEO uh, is, let's say, responsible for certain pods or, or there will be somebody senior uh, who is responsible, right? Like, and we have our own review mechanisms with each of the pod or like, let's say how something is going. Got it, got it. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, talking about 2024, I think we definitely discussed, you know, what, what's exciting for Ninja Cut. Um, but every conversation is going to have an element of AI, right? There's lots that's changed. 
and uh, you being a technologist at heart uh, definitely focused on product um, what are you excited about i'm sure you know you, you've been keeping up with some of the latest developments um, within ninja cart and outside is there something that really caught your eye i think uh, <clears throat> very very interesting uh, times right I, th i think this this probably looks like the next big revolution uh <clears throat> in terms of impact right um like how internet came in and then like let's say a lot of platforms came in uh, which kind of changed the way that we are today uh, i feel the next big change is uh, this right um uh but but I, but i still think we are like about 2 3 years away in terms of uh, it having the uh, complete impact in in the way that we today write code in the way that we write uh, rpids today Uh, all of this getting fully transformed and 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 uh, uh, fully leveraging the capabilities of a maybe um, it's it's let's say uh, uh, two uh, two three years away right uh, uh, see why one practical thing that uh, that I really liked <coughs> which Nandan uh, said recently is is uh, I th I think we should start focusing on uh, let's say building uh, the use cases on which uh, so so. if the the llms and and the models will will kind of let's say uh, become like a commodity very very soon mm. uh, uh why don't we all start thinking about uh, let's say what use cases can we apply for that right like let's say what use case can we apply for a kirana what use case can we apply for a farmer in india uh, i i think there has to be much more thought and and let's say um, discussion discussion on like let's say what use cases can we solve for using the current uh, ai models we have we definitely have uh, formed a, a small pod within uh, ninja card we are trying to work on certain farmer related advisory uh, uh, issues where let's say somebody has a plant disease uh, can they just upload a photo uh, right and and then we tell them let's say what disease what is the further action right so in terms of advisory and and uh, crop selection and all of that um <clears throat> can we do something in in terms of uh, the government schemes that are available <coughs> in india how do we let's say let them know right like, i i think these use cases will definitely uh, let's say uh, uh, build in in the near future so really looking forward to how this can change the way that every day uh, we come to work and 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 do things interesting um harish also want to dig a little deeper on the personal side of things um you mentioned earlier that you know spend at least early, for people earlier in their career apart from you know their work days uh, spend a little time you know learning things spend a little time weekends maybe jamming with people figuring out and those ideas will probably lead you to different different solutions right um how do you manage your work days along with you know personal life is there a hack you found to manage your work and life and to figure out a balance between these two See I think uh, uh it has changed uh, over the years right so uh, I I got married 3 uh, years back uh, so uh, before that uh, uh, right like uh, uh, pretty much every day I used to be in office till 2 am uh, come back again at 10 am and then like this used to be the uh, cycle right I think I think it also depends upon the uh, stage at which you are in like how much time uh, you need to uh, spend on your uh let's say office versus uh, personal so i think i think um, uh, um if if you don't have uh, anybody at home and and uh, you are you are uh, in a stage where you can offer uh, more of your time to work and learn uh, i would encourage uh, uh, in the initial few years of your career uh, try and do as many things as possible learn as much as possible uh, and and be curious um, uh, and after a point where you start having uh, a a personal uh, time that is really important uh, uh, and i think it's it's really important when you reach that stage that uh, you start having very clear boundaries on uh, let's say how much uh, let's say uh, you are uh, going to be at office versus how much uh, you're going to um, uh, let's say uh, right i i think the one personal thing that i have uh, done well to manage this is uh, uh, having very clear uh, commitments on let's say uh, how is my week looking like and like let's say uh, am i going to office on a saturday uh, right like being very clear about this uh, uh, with your family and and making sure they are also understand like let's say uh, uh, what what if 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 it's a important meeting at uh, uh, let's say your office let them know that why it is important and all of that i think <clears throat> making 
your family understand uh, let's say what are you going through and and uh, if you just say you are leaving to office today on a saturday morning they may not really understand uh, let's say uh, why it is important to go to office on a saturday but if you explain them you know there's a uh, let's say board meeting coming up or or let's say there's a important product release that i have and i have to be there with the team i think i think then naturally the conversation goes into okay this is an important thing and and stuff like that i think i think being very <coughs> Uh, uh open and and vocal about like what are you doing at work and and stuff like that like really helps you uh, uh understand and and balance right and 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 that's that's what i have at least followed uh, to make sure that it it's very uh, well done the communication is key there yeah. and uh, another very interesting point that i'd love to go a little more tactical on is um, on the hiring side right i think the world that we're living in today is very different from you know the zerp phenomenon 21 22 um and especially too from a product hiring point of view um uh, of course you have ramped up product hiring at ninja card but two two points that i'd love to cover um especially for younger product managers or mid stage product managers looking to advance their career um first one from tech to product that transition lots of developers following the product folks uh would love to understand okay hey, if they are in 24 looking to transition do you have some pieces of advice on how they can do or what should they be focusing on sure see i think uh, uh, this is a very uh, interesting uh, topic right because this i face even at ninja cart right there are folks in ninja cart in tech team who want to move to product right see i think the one advice that i have always given them is <clears throat> uh if you really want to do that uh rather than uh, let's say asking for this opportunity uh just just do something uh just just go and create a wireframe or or do a uh, or i think the, the, how i pick this is a lot of developers actually have the knack of let's say finding out the right product uh, structure or let's say coming up with the right flow uh, mm-hmm. even better than the product managers who has proposed it right like i think before having a conversation that i want to move into products if you can pick up some project within your own organization and and kind of let's say uh, uh, earn the trust of the product management team that you are able to visualize you are able to uh, think through something right you are able to uh, uh, let's say uh, suggest great ideas right i think earning the trust of the uh, pro- because today i know uh, there are a lot of tech guys who have a very good respect from uh, let's say the product managers because whenever the product manager goes and talks to them about an idea or uh, uh, let's say a problem statement right they are actually able to visualize the product they are able to ask the right set of questions right i think the first thing is to really <clears throat> take a use case within your organization see how you can better it uh, how you can let's say kind of uh, put your thoughts if you really want to uh, let's say Uh, uh get uh, transformed yourself into a product manager right i think the first step is to just take a product within your thing see how you can transform it tell let's say how uh, i spoke to 10 customers this is what let's say they feel about it and based on this let's say i am changing uh, uh, x and y of it right i think if you approach it that way i think there'll be a lot of confidence already uh, built on the product management team and 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 i think from there the conversation is okay now that you've done this uh, uh is it, is it, are you as and then there are conversation that i have had saying are you aspiring to become a product manager and, and and there are people who have said yes there are people who have said no right like so so i think <clears throat> uh see of course there are a lot of materials uh, let's say these uh, podcasts a lot of information available right and and i feel the information is too much also right uh but i but i think the way to really do this is take a use case really try and solve it in your way two things happen there right like one it will also give you confidence that you are able to take a problem statement think better or think a better solution than somebody and one you will get that confidence yes and and you'll also understand whether do you enjoy the process mm. see in your mind it can always be that i'm a developer i'm always coding i'm not solving uh, solutions how can be part of the solutioning if that's the thought that is going through in your mind i think then take a problem statement and 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 to a lot of people i i even say don't even take ninja card problems you, you take even something like apps that you use daily uh take a swiggy or or take a danzo or or take some uh, apps that you use daily and tell me what are you so annoyed about in that 
how can you make a better flow than like what is already there then let's have a discussion i have had folks not even tech right like i have had folks from uh, hr i have had folks from uh, business uh, <clears throat> let's say who come and say why can't i uh, join a product management team right? and, and and this is the first advice that i give right and and say you go do something and and come back to me right and and there are people who take it very passionately and and there are things that they have solved for really <clears throat> if the interest is not true yeah. then it would drop off at that point if if somebody takes the time to go take a uh, app that they daily use and then like let's say uh, solve for it and then come back right i would always spend lot more time with them because they are putting the effort right uh, so i i think that's the uh, uh, option that i would give everyone where uh, uh, if you really think you want to switch careers from uh, uh, beat i'm i'm not even saying tech right it could be even from any other uh, division uh, first of all you should realize that you enjoy this process yeah. you should be able to uh, really uh, uh, see the win there so you take any uh, app anything and and you really try to break down like why is it built this way what are wh- why would someone have thought this is better than what you are thinking and then like propose solution and see wh- how people are reacting to it i think that's probably the first step i would tell anyone who is trying to do this very interesting and um, <clears throat> another point is um, in 2024 somewhere as a market um, like you mentioned it's not the days of 2015 16 where there wasn't enough material available we're probably at the other end of the spectrum where there is way too much um so for someone uh, you mentioned some interesting points for someone looking to transition from say engineering to product but also from a market perspective it is also a tough market to get hired right um and i'm sure you know you've had these discussions with a lot of people do you have some pieces of advice for them for someone looking out for a product role today uh, in 2024 Uh, how should they be thinking about their careers in general maybe just not product but how should they start thinking about their careers see i, I feel the market as such uh, definitely it has become uh, difficult to uh, let's say get into a product management role yeah. because i think the kind of process that we follow today the amount of time that we spend in uh, let's say doing a case study yeah. uh, uh, I, i think no longer at uh, ninja card for somebody at a gpm and above Uh, uh we just have two three calls we uh, have a checklist and and like say hire someone right we definitely go through a very thorough case study uh, see uh, uh, during the process let's say how someone is able to think through uh, when you throw a very difficult problem at them how do they react uh, all of this right so i think i think the uh, the the maturity of the process has also really changed uh, over the years i remember how i hired my product managers way back in 2015 to now uh it has definitely become uh, difficult right but but given said that uh if you are a uh person who can uh, uh let's say uh, envision something and and really stay through the process to iterate multiple journeys and and build something uh i think india is in a very good state today that we will go on to uh, let's say build a lot more products for india from india right uh, i i think that way i think <clears throat> uh the number of use cases are continuously increasing uh the kind of problems that we are solving for are increasing so i think there is enough uh pipeline of let's say problem statements at hand i, I don't think that is drying down right it's not like we are reaching a stage where uh, let's say you are in a uh, uh, industry where uh, there is no longer innovation happening and maturity I, i don't think it's like that right like i think product managers are needed everywhere today yeah. the, the kind of problems that we are facing and and the amount of investment that's happening in india i think <laughs> we are in a very good state but but you need to be uh, absolutely sure that uh, these are the skills that i have and really see what matches that right i, th- I think a lot of times people uh, uh, make a mistake in the right? at least this is what i feel that that uh, they are not clear on like let's say what they want and they don't approach the right company or the right problem statement to get themselves associated right? if if you have a very good realization of let's say what is your Uh, capability and what can you add on, add on to the table i think i think it will it it will be a, a very uh, easy step for the hiring company also to uh, make a decision god oh, that's interesting um, um, harish this probably brings us to the last segment we have a very fun rapid fire for you um, i'm going to throw questions at you and whatever comes to the top of your mind you could do, you could go back and hit that up um, the first one is if you could have dinner with any one person from history who would that be and why uh i think okay i'm not thinking but whatever comes immediately i think i would say uh, uh abdul kalam uh, uh uh i think right from my childhood i've always uh, read his story uh, been very inspired about uh, let's say uh, how he started his journey to let's say how he uh, let's say reach his stroke then uh, being a president right I, i think for me top of my mind abdul kalam comes to my mind yeah 
um harish what is one one uh, interesting use case of ai in your daily life do you use it if you were to think about uh so i think i think the one thing that uh, uh, that i'm very much fascinated uh, which i'm doing some experiments to implement at ninja cut also is is uh, uh, these ai tools which have come to summarize your meetings and give action items yeah. uh, which has been a very big problem for me on on really to take action items uh, from a meeting and being able to follow up on that mm-hmm. i think if if somebody or, or or the tool can like say listen to the end, and and i'm already amazed at the results of uh, Is there one that you like right now? Is there a tool that comes to mind? Or yeah, the the go to meetings uh, is a, a tool that uh, uh, which which uh, I am very much interested about. Uh, but yeah, I think there are multiple uh, let's say such options, right? Yeah. So uh, I think um, uh, I'm already amazed at the results where it's able to uh, let's say relate two independent uh, let's say statements made by uh, two uh, individual people at two. different points in time and come up with the action item i think uh, this has always been a problem for me where uh, uh, i go into multiple such meetings and i and i uh, uh, we decide let's like, say a lot of things to do but then how do you be disciplined to let's say uh, uh, have a note of that and then like let's say follow up right i i think if this gets solved yeah. uh, that would save about an hour for me every day on a day to day basis and last one harish if you were not doing product at ninja cut today what else would you be doing i would be uh, um, doing engineering then engineer okay that's something that you're really really passionate about yeah. awesome thank you so much arish i think this conversation was fantastic thank you so much for you know walking us through some of the interesting insights in the agritech domain and um, really excited about you know what's coming through at ninja cut and as well um thank you so much for spending time with us thank you thank you so much guys i i really enjoyed this uh, hope to have more such fun talks Absolutely. with you yeah Absolutely. thank you Cheers.